Hello and welcome to Close Calls on the 42.e brought to you in association with Air Sport. As we said last week on our debut, we will be coming at you every Friday, dialing up the best journalists, pundits, sports people in the game to preview the biggest sporting event of the weekend. And the fact that I, Gavin Casey, am joined by the GA editor of the 42.e, Fintan O'Toole, might give you a hint as to what that event might be this weekend. How are things, Fintan? All good, Gavin. Yourself? Yeah, uh, really good now. Thank you. Uh, actually... Speaking of Mayo Kerry this weekend, we uh, do have a couple of little uh, gifts possibly to give away. Uh, we've got two tickets to that game at Croke Park. Uh, there they are there. One for you, one for me. No, I'm only joking. Uh, best comment, basically, as we tend to do here. So uh, anything you want to add to the video, um, we have got a guest that you can ask questions to. And that guest's name is Paul Kerrigan. Paul, welcome to the show. How are things? Hi, lads. How are you getting on? Ah, not too bad now, Paul. Um, I suppose... Disappointing way to finish the season in a sense. Uh, you're kind of watching on now with the rest of us, but uh, you're the key, you're a, a kind of a, I think, the best guest to have, having played both of these teams this season. We'll get to that in a while. Um, in terms of the managerial situation there for Cork at the moment, Paul, are you just kind of waiting around to see what happens or, or any insights as to what's going on? Yeah, I suppose, look, the, the season ended disappointingly, like um, no real silver. Um, yeah, I suppose... Um, I think they're hopefully having looking to resolve it maybe in the next month or so, maybe fairly quickly, so it doesn't linger on and, and that manager can get his backroom staff and all that into place and meet players and stuff, so the sooner the better as far as we're concerned. I suppose, Paul, the, the championship ended pretty frustratingly for you, the fact that you pushed me so close uh, in the Gaelic grounds. When you see what they've done since, I mean, stumbled initially against Roscommon the first day in Crow Park, but really kind of exploded to life on the, the bank holiday Monday, and the fact that they're now winning all in the semi-final, does that kind of make the memories of that even maybe even more frustrating, that, uh, that qualifier defeat? Yeah, I was not even not even so a championship, but a league campaign that was very kind of up and down, really. And um, you know, we've never really put consistency together throughout the league or championship, and uh, we showed we were capable of against Mayo. And um, you know, we showed we can mix it with some very good teams. Um, very lucky not to get a result, and you know, you kind of see the likes of maybe Ross Common and Arma and Monaghan at that latter end of the championship where we'd like to get to. And get into that top four. So, um, yeah, just it's probably a bit galling Go, looking back on it, uh, how close you are, and who knows where we could end up. Yeah, yeah, I suppose he performed a lot better against Mayo ultimately than he did against Kerry. But as we said, you've got an insight into into both teams. Uh, one of the points Finton was making to me actually before we came on air was uh, the goal scoring opportunities that Cork created against both teams. And even though the Kerry defeat transpired to be a fairly heavy one in the end, I mean, if you convert three or four of those chances, the game changes, as you, as you know yourself. Um, do you feel as though like both of these defences can actually be gotten at, and who who do you reckon will be the more capable team of taking advantage of that? Um, yeah, I think we kind of identified running at both defences um, as a way of um, maybe op opening up goal opportunities. Uh, we find the carry defence they're they're very almost very selfish defenders. Like the, if I if a fellow's marking me, he'll follow me all over the pitch, and they pride themselves in shutting down the six forwards. Um, we gave Mayo a sweeper then, on the other hand, in Keith Higgins, but we still managed to get through it and get goal opportunities. Um, we didn't get any against Kerry, we got a couple against Mayo. Um, so I think they'll both probably look at that as a weakness so in terms of running right down the centre of, of both um, defences and trying to open up a goal opportunity. And as you saw in the last one, Mayo um, got a, a whole pile of goal opportunities and were really clinical. and the forwards Kerry have if they get a sniff they'll score a goal as well Like the one thing as well I suppose about Mayo's last game it was the first time in a while that we've seen them maybe perform a bit better at the back and shutting them out I mean after you'd scored two goals against them Roscommon had two goals on the board within I think it was 10 or 15 minutes uh, the drawn game in Crow Park yeah. but maybe there was signs that they're finally kind of getting it together at the back and they, they definitely didn't allow kind of Roscommon any kind of room to kind of charge through and, and make any headway in that replay yeah, um, when we obviously got drawn against them, we, we looked at um, the Galway game and especially the Derry game, who had huge um, opportunities running down through the middle. I think they were probably missing that kind of stopper or kind of physical presence around centre back, um, and just to fill that hole, probably their half back line is their platform for attacking, and uh, they really play very much in the front foot. And, but as a team, they just generally tried to shut down Roscommon the last day, and they did, and Roscommon didn't really really get a sniff. Yeah, a question here. Um, you mentioned Keith Higgins there a minute ago, Paul. Uh, a question from Niall Kerwin. Cheers, Niall. He says, do you think there's any benefit uh, to moving Keith Higgins up the field? Uh, he's a great man marker, but maybe cutting the supply of ball to the carry forward line is Mayo's best hope since there isn't a strong enough full back line to cope anyway. Yeah, I would like to see him probably in the half back line for in general for Mayo, but I just think 
in this particular game, Kerry have such two deadly corner forwards, they need him to shut down one, either O'Donoghue or Ganey. He did some good battles with O'Donoghue before, so you probably expect him to pick him up and do a job there. But in general, I would always like, I'd like to see him play maybe a seven rather than a four. Because you talk about the corner forwards there, and it's been interesting to build up to this game. A lot of the focus has been on Kerry's full forward, Kieran Donaghy, I suppose, going back to 06, the damage he did against Mayo, the way he kind of turned the two games in 2014, and, and the fact that he had such a good game against Galway. Do you think there's almost been a bit of overemphasis on him? I mean, you saw in the Munster final the, the damage the two co- lads in the corners can cause, and that, you know, there's maybe it's amongst supporters, not necessarily amongst the Mayo management, but that has been a bit of a, too much of a kind of a preoccupation with the threat that Donahue will, is going to pose. Yeah, it's funny actually because uh, coming up to the Kerry game, we. We thought that he um, might start. We, you know, whereas the other two were guaranteed to start. We, did, you know, we were I was up in the air. Maybe we might start someone like Stephen O'Brien or Barry John Keane, who'd started the previous game. But um, the two boys done first damage against us, and then obviously James Dunn, who was quite quiet, like against Galway the final game, and Danny done done um, done wreck. Like so, I think he's kind of like he's probably a wild card or a second option from, and he's a great second option. Like I think obviously they like to play a nice ball into the into the two boys in the corners. But if they're stuck, he's a, he's one hell of an option for, for even just to break the ball or lay off the ball to the two lads. And um, I suppose um, it was O'Donoghue and Ganey got all the plaudits against us. And then it was maybe um, Donaghy the last day against Galway. So, like, I mean, Mayor going to have their hands full with the three of them. One of the big things to get taught against Galway was that whatever about the, a lot of the attention on the full back lane inside, there seemed to be no pressure on the ball coming in. I mean, how, how important is that? Like, I think David Moore and Peter Crowley... Uh, for the, I think the goal he scored and the point he got in the first half, you know, they had all the time to kind of, you know, pick him out from about 50, 60 yards out. I mean, like you've played kind of in the half forward line uh, against Kerry, like how much of an onus is there on, on the players in that part of the pitch to put the pressure on the, the guys who are going to be supplying the ball into him? Yeah, I think that was something we probably learned the hard way uh, in looking at the videos back of the Kerry game. Um, we did get bodies back into the middle third and we flooded it, but we didn't get enough heat in the ball and probably equally our, our, our man markers weren't tight enough. Um, look, Kerry are always going to be a kick first team and you're just going to have to put under serious pressure. Um, in fairness, Ian McGuire that day did put a lot of pressure on David Moore, but maybe the rest of us didn't step up. And, um, you know, if they're getting enough ball, like, I, I mean, they didn't hit their first wide until their 17th shot in the 42nd minute or something like that. So um, they were just deadly. So there has to be, I think Mayo will try flood that middle third and just get serious heat in the ball then and makes their jobs for like Sir Keith Higgins and Harrison a lot easier then. Yeah, a couple of questions here um, kind of on, on a similar topic or maybe converse in a sense. Uh, Connell Foynes asks, uh, how will Kerry deal with Lee Keegan? And Fintan O'Reilly asks, have Kerry got the back line then to stop the Mayo forward scoring freely from open play? Um, on Keegan, it'd be interesting to see where he plays. Like, um, I'd like to see him play in midfield. To be honest with you, just out around the middle of Crow Park, and he's maybe that bit closer to goal. And he's from half back. Um, like, he's probably the best, one of the best players in the country, without a doubt. Like, he's flying at the moment. Um, it'd be interesting to see who Kerry put on him, though. Would they put someone like Crowley or Morley out to midfield? To him, like Morley done a good job on Kilkenny, Kieran Kilkenny for Dublin before. And I think probably, I think I do think then Kerry probably do have the backs to probably. Um, to hold Mayo from open play. Um, th- again, Mayo, their scoring percentage was very, very high against us. Killian O'Connor played excellent, had a field day, Andy Moore played very well. And as I said earlier, the carry backs, whoever is stationed to manmark those lads, um, probably Paul Murphy and Kevin McLaughlin as well, they'll take pride in shutting those fellas down. Because the, the big thing I suppose the Roscommon replay, which has ultimately been Mayo's best performance this summer, was that it was the runners from deep were causing the causing the trouble I mean there was really great start afterwards that every single outfield player in the Mayo team had a shot and goal even Brendan Harrison got up at one stage in the first half so you know maybe like obviously as you said killing O'Connor and Andy Moore and caused you a bit of problems but you know Kerry are probably going to be really well aware since the last common replay of you know the likes of Donald Vaughan if he starts uh, Higgins we talked about and Keegan it's those runners from deep getting into scoring positions that they'll be kind of looking to counteract Yeah I think it's their natural instinct uh, all the backs um, I mean Keegan got a black card against us and Cullen Boyle was taken off and or half hours on a, a major job in tracking those lads and shutting them down. But then it was someone like Durkin came on and kicked a point, you know, in, in normal time, kicked their last point in normal time. Um, and with on that, the running, I think they, they've gone a lot shorter with their kickouts this year. Um, it's something we noticed. Like, I would always consider Clark to, to hit a lot of them long. And, and they went short and off lot against us, and they're, and they're trying to start from deep and run it. I think it's their strength, and they're probably right, to, to be honest. Yeah, one of the things uh, Fint and I were kind of talking about there the other day, was I suppose the Mayo fans are getting an awful lot of credit this season. I suppose they've been on the go with that team, like simultaneous to that team for a long time now. Um, 
how much of a difference did you think, do you think it made to the Mayo players against you lads in Limerick? Like they seem to be making serious noise, and obviously we know at this stage it, it means a, a, an awful lot of, uh, an awful lot to them. The players constantly praising the fans, uh, but it seems now almost like maybe it switched from having an added pressure to having what they're calling a sixteenth man. I yeah, one hundred percent agree with it. I think they were they were unbelievable against us and some of my friends and family members in the crowd and some of the players the next day when we were chatting just um, mentioned, said, geez, their fans, they never returned to them. Do you know, no matter, like we, we pegged them back from seven points um, and could have put them away next time and they just they just kept backing them, kept backing them and then at the full-time whistle, I mean, just kind of a small pitch invasion or whatever and they were really bigging them up for the next round, next the following week and I think they have a fantastic bond with their fans and they're usually important. I mean, the fans are just as hungry as the players to, to get that all early. Like. That uh, kind of, I suppose, relationship and connection between the fans and players, it seems to have been built up through the, the back door. I mean, you know, game by game, they've kind of they've kind of got it together. You would have been in that position in 2010 when Cork kind of came through the back door. You know, maybe the team weren't playing brilliantly but you were kind of... Get, getting over it, you know, there was a bit of criticism of Mayo's performances early on this summer, the fact that it went extra time against Derry, uh, extra time against Yee, uh, kind of be clear and narrowly. Um, but how much can kind of that qualifier run, the fact that you're winning those games, maybe not playing to your potential, but what can that do for a team in, kind of, in terms of kind of sparking that connection between the fans and the players and kind of getting your season back on track? Yeah, it's 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 something different, I suppose, because Mayo would have had, I think it's five kind of titles in a row and would have went through very straightforwardly to the August Bank Holiday weekend, quarter final, semi final, final. We'd been similar enough. Um, like with Cork in 2007, 2008, and 2009, you know, provincial championships, and then getting getting to the quarters and semis. And um, I suppose then in 2010, like we were, we'd Cavan at home, Wexford away, Limerick away, uh, Ross Common, you know, really tough games. You know, it was like the middle of winter, we played Wexford. And it, just like me, I know, I suppose it, we were seasoned at the time, like the, a lot of the team was seasoned. And um, once we got to the quarter final, won the quarter final, we knew we'd have break to the semi. And maybe Mayo are in the same position now. And I think definitely the home, the two extra time games would have really um, tightened up. And they might feel it's their year. You know, they've they've gone through the straightforward route for a number of years now, and they might feel like you know, who knows what could happen? This could be our year. We might as well just go for it. And um, yeah, as I said, you might yeah, it worked for us in 2010. And you never know with these lads. I suppose one of the arguments coming out of um, uh, Mayo beating Cork Paul was. Because it was so close, and I suppose Mayo by a lot were, were expected by a lot of people to maybe win the game more comfortably. Oh, it's look, they're on their last legs, like they actually don't have it in the legs anymore. Similar in the drawn game with Ross Common, and it's probably been a narrative that's been peddled all season. How did you find them in terms of actually just running against them and obviously going into extra time against them? And it w- wasn't their first stint of extra time in the season either. Yeah, I, I felt um, in the last 10 minutes of normal time. Uh, that we had them like I, I, I felt they, they looked knackered and their, their energy was gone and we were just on a roll we had a bit of momentum and I, I thought we had them in normal time to be honest with you and then in extra time in fairness like we I thought we had them a half time as well we were winning a half time by a point or two and then they just kicked on I think that's look they've been there longer than most of our team has been there and um, as I said they've been knocking around from about 2011 on and um, it's probably just in their legs and it's just probably in, in their minds as well they're, they're very experienced to just dig out wins like that, you know, the top teams pride themselves in digging out wins like that, but um, I don't think they're on their last legs, I just think they're a very seasoned team, um, if they probably were a bit more clinical in normal time, they would have seen us off, you know, we came back from seven points or whatever, so um, I, I don't think they're a tired team, and I think getting over the quarter-final replay against Ross Common would be a, a great um, kind of break from, and they'll be, uh, build up this game. Where do you think Kerry stand? I mean, it's it's quite difficult to read them in the sense that <coughs> It's, it's, I think it's the fifth year in a row when Ian Fitzmaurice has been there that they've had a pretty one-sided and routine quarter-final win and they've got to the semi-final and you know the last, I suppose, narrow victory they had was the league final back in April. Uh, do you think they're just so experienced at this stage that that kind of maybe inactivity, for want of a better word, will, will affect them? Um, or do you think like do you think their season has ultimately all been geared about, I suppose, maybe another another crack-off and another final and, and possibly another crack-off Dublin? Yeah, I don't th- I think, um, actually... Kerry's season so far couldn't have gone better from to be honest with you. Johnny dug out a fierce, um, probably unexpected league final win, and um, probably with a f- few new guys in the team. Um, I suppose Cruz through Munster, uh, beating us provincial title, done their business in the quarter final against maybe uh, seen as an up and coming Galway team, and they're here in the semi final. And it probably, from a planning and periodization point of view, probably couldn't have worked out any better. You know, they're planned for the league final, planned for provincial final, planned for the quarter final, and, and then so on. So, 
Um, like they're similar to it's worked for Dublin over the last couple of years. So I like for Kerry, it's all earned or nothing. So right from the start of the year, they would have been planning for this semi final going through the front door. So I'd say they're they're pretty well prepared. You mentioned the the young guy, young guys there. Were you a bit surprised that maybe some of the more of them haven't seen action? I mean, I think from the players that played in the league final, Jack Barry's mainly the only one that's kind of seen time. I mean, we yeah. haven't seen Ronan Shanahan, uh, Gavin Crowley come in in that game as a sub. Haven't seen him since some of the 21 players have been added to the panel, like Sean or Shane Thomas Sullivan. But it's it's kind of been the, the reliable guys the last couple of years. Maybe getting them fit was their main uh, main goal this year, getting all those guys back sharp and, and, and in action. Yeah, I suppose it's probably a way of blooding them as well. And you know they're all about the league. I think uh, Jack Savage is another fellow who might have seen a bit of game time. I think he was he was sick against us. But um, yeah, um, as you said, Jack Barry is nearly the only fellow who's who's really come in and, and made it his own. So, um, but if for a lot of those lads are in their mid mid to late twenties, like so they're not that old anyway. Do you know what I mean? And I'd say a lot of them have won all or a medal, which isn't too many for a probably a carry man. So. They're probably fairly hungry to add to their collection. Question here, actually, Paul, uh, on the topic of, of rebuilding and blooding youth, or blooding youth even, uh, Emer Cleary asks, will Cork do the double now in the next five years since they're rebuilding in both codes? No pressure now, Paul. <laughs> uh, we're very optimistic in Cork, so you never know. Like, um, It's not beyond us anyway. We won't say anything about that. <laughs> we have another uh, cork centre <laughs> question here. It might even be a mate of yours. It's yeah. uh, Richard Whelan who's asking, are you going to the Cork City match tonight? But I believe you've plans. <laughs> yeah, no, I go to a lot of the Cork City games, but um, you know, they hopefully win the league this year. I, I only live up the road from the stadium, but we have a club game with uh, any more Rangers, so looking forward to get back into action with the lads, and uh, hopefully we get to the next city game. Paul O'Gorman has one here as well, uh, Finton. Uh, I actually like this question, and going back to the Mayo Kerry thing more so than uh, well, a, a lot of um, rebel peddling here by ourselves. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, ask Paul if he could pick one player from each team to play for Cork, who would it be? You don't have to replace uh, anyone on your team now, you know what I mean? Probably, definitely, I'd say Lee Keegan and um, I'd say the way he's going at the moment, Paul Ganey, probably. Yeah, Paul Ganey's a weapon, all right. Yeah, he, he, he seems to be the one, um, you know, like we were talking earlier, kind of about O'Donoghue, or about O'Donoghue, I suppose, and we were talking about Donaghy, but is, is there an argument that he's probably carries most important forward now at the moment? And kind of on that note, do you think, will, will Mayo go maybe Brendan Harrison, or, or do you think he, Higgins would be the one to, to kind of take him up on Sunday? Yeah, I think he's been probably their most consistent forward over. He's gotten continuously better over the last three years. In fairness to him, um, do you know he's he's kind of he's the main man last last couple of years. I thought to be honest with you, um, I don't know who's had a tough time with injury, but I think Harrison will probably go on him. I think Keegan will probably um, the, O'Donoghue who's a bit pacier than Ganey, so they'll probably put um, uh, Higgins on O'Donoghue and probably Harrison on, on Ganey then. Uh, one here from Brian O'Sullivan, Paul. He asks, um, do you feel that Mayo have the wherewithal to beat? two of the remaining three teams carry on Sunday and then the winners of Tyrone Dublin I mean presuming that the winner of the second semi-final is Dublin you're kind of talking about two of Mayo's bogey teams really for want of a better expression but <coughs> as you mentioned uh, or as you alluded to there a couple of minutes ago you kind of get the impression now that this season Mayo are kind of like having been written off so early I mean the bells were tolling for them they're all of a sudden kind of going let's just go for it you know and maybe some of those hang-ups from the past be they mental or otherwise might just kind of dissipate and you never know like yeah I, I think that's it you never know and especially with Mayo this year you never know what's going to happen um, like I like they kind of blew up against Galway like and, and then they you know, destroyed Ross Common the last day um, I don't think they've beaten Kerry in over 20 years and I just think I don't think they I don't think they'll do it either this year to be honest which I think Kerry's running is, I think they're primed for the All-Ireland and I don't think Kerry have ever fared Mayo. I don't think, especially in the last 10, 15 years, they've, they've really blown away a couple of times. And I think if Kerry had a choice of any of the three all Ireland semi-finalists, they'd probably like to play Mayo to treat them. That's an interesting one now. I mean, kind of takes our last question off us, to be honest. But uh... I suppose we, we, we can look ahead. So if, you, if, you're, <laughs> if you're tipping Mayo to, or Kerry to win on Sunday, uh, who do you think is going to win Sunday week and uh, face them in the final? Yeah, I would have said to a good few of my friends, I just have a sneaking feeling for Tyrone. Okay. I think it'll be a Kerry-Tyrone final. Um, I think Tyrone have done very well against the Dubs in the league up in Crow Park, and they just they just seem to have a good trage trajectory as well. Um, Tyrone do, and um, whether it's this year or the next couple of years, I think they'll definitely be knocking around in All Ireland. Uh, so I suppose we might go one further to wrap up. Uh, if yeah, if it's a Kerry Tyrone <laughs> final, are we going back to a, a repeat of the the mid two thousands, or do you reckon Kerry can finally put that one to bed? 
in a final, I mean. Uh, oh, I don't know. I think that would be a tight one. I think um, a bit like Mayo, maybe I have a hang-up against Kerry. Um, or, or Kerry might have a small one about against Tyrone, and you never know when they get to a final. It's it's, it's very hard to, to, to call what can happen. Do you know, I remember our final in 2010, like, um, I don't know, we were three, four, five points down at half time against Down, who we were strong favourites against. So, um, I don't know, I wouldn't like to call until until they both get to the final. Lovely stuff. Well, Paul, uh, sincerely appreciate you taking the time. Thanks a million for joining us on Close Calls. Uh, enjoy your match down west tonight, and uh, sure, we might see you in turn, turn us across there someday. Cheers. Yeah, perfect. Cheers, Cheers lads. Good luck. All the best. Bye bye. Well, that is all we've got time for, Finton, on Close Calls for this week, although well we do have a competition winner to unveil uh the winner is we don't have a drum roll we actually need to sort that out uh the winner is connell foynes so these two tickets connell will be going to yourself i have to say when i intended to kind of lean over and, and show them like that earlier i thought it'd be a lot smoother than <laughs> it transferred to be a bit awkward but anyway congratulations to you connell enjoy the game uh, that is it from us on close calls for this week uh, our thanks as per usual go to air sport and we'll be back Next Friday around this time uh, to preview uh, the big one in Las Vegas. Uh, it should be an interesting one. So uh, until then, take it easy.